What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Last Principles. I'm your host, M.A. Today, I need to address something real quick. So recently, I've had a few comments uh, on my videos suggesting, requesting, even demanding that I make disclaimers in my videos saying, you know, whatever topic I'm, talk I'm talking about in that video, uh, making the distinction that the ICOC doesn't do that anymore. The ICOC is different now. The ICOC has changed. It doesn't do these things anymore. That um, whatever topic I'm talking about, uh, the ICOC has stopped doing that. Uh, that, oh, well, this thing you're talking about, this practice stopped way back in 2001 and your video is from last year. So your information is out of date. You need to make it clear in your videos that, that this is not uh, up-to-date information or that, you know, this is the icoc doesn't do this anymore it's the icc that does this you need to get your facts straight you uh you're misleading people with your with your video with your uh with your title and the and in your description uh you need to be fair to the icoc um you, you can do whatever you want in the icoc now what's the icc doing that look here i mean let me tell y'all something in case y'all haven't seen any of my earlier videos and you know in case you're just now you know in case you're new to the channel i was in the icoc for 13 years i got baptized on october 8th 2000 and i left uh the week of thanksgiving in 2013. again there for 13 years so i haven't seen some things I was there. I this is a lived experience for me. I know what I'm talking about. This is not something where I'm I'm not talking about this stuff from secondhand information. This ain't he say, she say, this ain't hearsay. A lived experience for me. I was there. Okay. I was there for two and a half years, two years and some change prior to the infamous Henry Creek letter. I was there for two and some change years before the letter dropped. I stayed for almost a decade after the letter dropped. So again, I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. I have seen changes. Yes, there are some things that are different, some things that are different, some things that have changed. But by and large, from, from my eyes, from what I've experienced and from what I've heard from other testimonies, y'all ain't changed enough not enough for me to sit here and make a disclaimer and say it ain't the same not enough to sit here and say oh well it's different now no nah, no nah, not from what i've seen not from what i've heard okay i have heard way too many testimonies saying otherwise and not just testimonies of people who left before i got there people who left during my tenure there people who left maybe shortly after i left also people who left many years after i left people who actually have come and gone since i've left people who even joined during the pandemic and left after the pandemic people who have come and gone in the last year or two and all these testimonies they match up with people who have left in the 80s 90s and 2000s all these all these new testimonies corroborate with all the old ones so like if I hear if I hear a, a testimony of somebody who left in who joined in like 2020 or 2021, if they if they didn't have the time stamp on it to say that they actually came and left in that time, I wouldn't have known that it wasn't one of the older heads. OK, so the fact that I'm still hearing these uh, these testimonies from newer people and they sound like they sound just like the testimonies of people who left many years ago that lets me know that y'all stripes ain't changed y'all 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 spots ain't changed okay and again if i had to make it clear if i hadn't made it clear in other videos i'm that's aimed at the establishment that's aimed at the system and not the people within it i still believe there are good god-fearing people there who want to do who want to do the lord's work who want to do what's right and who don't want to be damaging and who don't want to you know be toxic who don't want to be controlling this is aimed at the establishment not the people in it okay so yeah from all of those testimonies 
I'm not I'm I have no interest in sitting here and saying that the ICOC is different. Not gonna do it. No, I'm not going out of my way to do that. So actually I have some homework for y'all. For those of you who are still members, I got some homework for y'all. Yeah. So first of all, before I actually give the actual <laughs> assignments, I really think a lot of you need to get out of this mentality of, oh, well, if it didn't happen to me, then it didn't happen to anybody else. If it didn't happen to me, then I, ha I have a hard time believing that this is a thing. It didn't happen in my ministry, so it can't be happening anywhere else. First of all, even when I was there, and I was a you know card carrying Kool Aid drinking member and had no plans of leaving. I noticed differences in ministries. For example, when I was in Tallahassee, you know, at the one time that I dated in in the ICOC, it was in Tallahassee. Dating couples that were not leading ministries together were not allowed to sit together. For let's pause there for a second. The word "allowed," the word "allowed," the fact that that word is in there that's that's enough trouble on its own. But dating couples who were not leading a ministry together were not allowed to sit together during gatherings of the body. You know, they were not allowed to sit together at midweek. We're not allowed to sit together during uh, Sunday service because they were not you weren't supposed to be too into each other. Fast forward in a couple of years to my stay in Atlanta in the Atlanta uh, branch of the Church of Christ. I saw dating couples sitting together all the time, you know, whether they were leading ministries together or not. So I've seen, I know of ministries where certain ministries where um, the sisters were allowed to take brothers out on encouragement days, while other ministries, the sisters were told, oh, you got to let the brothers lead. They need to ask you out what that had to do with leading, whatever. I, I'm saying this to say that even, even when I was there, I noticed that there were differences in ministry. So you can't really say that because it wasn't happening in your ministry, that it didn't happen somewhere else, that it happened somewhere else or that it didn't happen somewhere else. You know, stop assuming that your experience is everybody's experience. And those of us who have left, we know that we know that our experience is not everybody's experience. I know that just because something happened to me, that, that doesn't mean that it happened everywhere. But I also know that if it happened to me, I'm not the only one. I am, even if I'm not, even if I'm the exception and not the rule, I am not the only exception. It happened to somebody, and that means it happened to enough people. Even if it, if it, even if it didn't happen to everybody, it happened to enough people. Okay. I'm a black man in America. Okay. I can say to this day, I have never had a negative experience with cops i've never had a cop give me a bad attitude i've never had a cop put their hands on me i've never experienced police brutality i've and i've never had a blatant ish, a blatant example of racism against me at least not to my knowledge at least not one that i picked up on but i would not dare sit here and say that that there are no bad cops out there that there are that there's not an issue of police brutality, that racism doesn't exist. I would not dare sit up here and gaslight all my fellow all my fellow black um African Americans here in 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 um in America. I would not gaslight them and say that. I would not dare invalidate their experience by saying that, oh well, I ain't, ain't never happened to me, so it, so it ain't a problem. My wife has never experienced sexual harassment or sexual assault, but she would not dare sit here and say that that's not an issue globally she would not sit here and say that because she didn't experience it that no women experience it or that women are lying when they say it happened i'm saying that to further drive the point home that don't dare sit up here and say that because something that one of us former members shares just because it didn't happen to you that it, that it just didn't happen like oh well i find it hard to believe that you know that this is happening somewhere because it's not happening in my ministry Get out of your own, get out of your ICOC bubble, get out of your own experience and be willing to empathize with this, the experience of somebody else. That's part of the first homework assignment. If you are a current member and you really are having a hard time wrapping your head around that some of the stuff is happening, I challenge you. Matter of fact, I dare you to not just look at the videos that I'm posting, not just look at the interviews that I've done and the people who I've, who have shared their stories with me, go and go. There's plenty of other XICOC YouTube channels and podcasts out there 
where people are sharing their experiences. I'm going to put a lot of them in the description here, you know, and I'm, I'm shouting them out right now. Y'all go check out the Reclamation podcast. Go check out Losing My Religion slash ICOC and ICC shenanigans. Go check out What the Flock. Go check out Sold Out Cult. Go check out um, uh, Nikita Lambert and uh, some of her friends that have been on her channel. Go check out, listen to all of them. There's a plethora of people being interviewed on those channels, a plethora of different experiences and testimonies there from people not from people in different areas people all across the united states people in australia people in africa people in europe uh and people in asia and people who have been in the been in the icoc in different uh time periods people who were there before the actual boston movement people who were in the mainline church people who crossed over from the mainline church to the icoc people who were there in the 80s 90s uh the aughts uh 20 teens 2020s people from all over those time periods and people from all different areas of the globe sharing their experiences and you're not going to hear any repeat people on these channels except for the fact that me Aldo over at the reclamation and double H over at um, losing my religion. The three of us have kind of gotten close and we have all interviewed each other. We've all done videos together. Other than the three of us, you are not going to hear um, the same person on two different channels. You know, you know, I'm, I'm saying that to say, you're not going, we're, we're not out here in interviewing the same five to 10 people and just recycling the same stories. We there's just a myriad of, a, a, a variety of different um of different testimonies and stories out there it's just to show y'all that this is still happening and it has been still happening and it's happening in multiple places okay Ch i challenge y'all to go listen to these testimonies and get ready because you're going to hear some uncomfortable things you're going to hear uncomfortable stories you're going to hear um you're going to hear some colorful language you know, you got some people who have no qualms about cursing, swearing, whatever you want to call it. Don't sit up here and tone police these people. What I mean by tone policing, if you're not familiar with that term, that means tone policing is I'm going to disregard what you're saying simply because I don't like how you're delivering it. So don't sit here and tune the tune out the person simply because they're not being loving. They're not um they're not being tactful they're not coming out from a place of love they're sharing their pain they're sharing their trauma they have no interest in being flowery and being pleasant when they share it they're they're sharing their pain they're they're getting their trauma out there don't disregard what they're saying simply because they got a curse word or 10 in there okay that's the time where you really need to put your empathy hat on you need to dig your heels in and listen harder listen harder and pra practice empathy and 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 sit there and just take in what they're saying and understand that this has happened to somebody and it has caused legit pain it's caused legit trauma so yes sit there and listen to some of these testimonies other homework if you're a current member and you swear up and down that the icoc has changed that is different leave me some comments and big shout out to uh if i get their names right chris and curtis in the uh, XICOC group, um, they gave uh, gave me this idea, um, or rather, they mentioned it in the in the comments. And I'm borrowing the idea. My apologies. Uh, I ho hope y'all are okay with this. Um, if you're a current member and you are adamant that the ICOC has changed, leave me some comments and tell me exactly how it has changed. Tell me a specific thing that you saw that needed changing. A, a specific thing that needed repentance on and how y'all changed it be specific show your work show your work on the page show your work in the comments because it ain't enough to just sit here and say oh well we changed we're different now how different how have you changed what did you do to change what what did, what did you notice that actually needed changing and what did you individually do or what did your ministry do to help bring about that change and has it been effective show show some show some proof that 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 change is actually effective and people are actually better for it so yeah do that homework leave me some leave me some comments let me know and but yeah to bring it back to the main point no i ain't leaving i ain't leaving no disc disclaimers y'all gonna sit with that 
y'all gonna sit with the discomfort that comes from hearing people's um negative testimonies about the organization you know just going back to my um uh weaponized forgiveness video if you really are just sitting here like oh well y'all y'all you need to be fair to us you need to stop talking about us blah 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 you're really just you don't really care about doing right by people. You don't care about actually changing. You don't care about uh, making things better. All you care about is the reputation of the organization. You just care about the image of the organization, if that's what you're crying about. So, yeah, I am making no disclaimers. Actually, you know what? Let me let me walk that back. I will. This will be my new intro. This is my new intro. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Last Principles. I'm your host, I'm a former uh, former member of the ICOC there from 2000 to, to 2013 i'll be able to i'll say that without mumbling and stuttering but yes that's my new intro so y'all know exactly how long i've been there so y'all don't get it twisted and don't think i know what the hell i'm talking about so yeah that's my disclaimer anyway y'all have a good night y'all leave me some comments uh please like subscribe share send this out to anybody who you think might benefit from from this i just i'm really just here for my fellow ex-members to let y'all know y'all ain't crazy to reassure you that you know your experience is valid that your pain is valid that your trauma is valid and that you're not alone that's it love y'all y'all have a good night and i'll see y'all at the next video peace